Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon series for our Lenten Wednesdays is about timely encounters, and today we're talking about Jesus breaking the rules. I'm going to break the rules of preaching engagement for a second and just from my heart say thank you so much to all of you. You have offered me encouragement and prayers with my mom's illness and hospitalization and with her passing. And I cannot say enough how loved I have felt, how supported my family has felt, and I wish to express that. I'll probably say it over and again uh, because you have been phenomenal in God's use to support me and my family during this extended period of time. And I'll stop breaking from convention and stop breaking rules and talk a little bit about Jesus breaking rules here with the man who was born blind. There are a number of rules that Jesus breaks here as he encounters this man born blind, and I'm going to run through each one of them. But let me ask you this, have you ever been one to try to bend the rules, break the rules? skirt the rules. I don't expect any of you to stand up and say, that was me, pastor, or let me tell you about the time when. However, I think it is something that all of us can own up to if we look and say, where has my life been? What have I done? What are the choices I have made? And from time to time, maybe it wasn't any time recent, but you think back to when you were a child and how your mom or dad said, you're going to need to come in at 9, and at 9.03, you're getting in to see that stern look because you've bent the rules at least just a little bit. And then as we live our lives, we find ways to game the system. But with God, there is no way to game the system because when we stand before God, He sees us just as we are, knowing our every frailty, infirmity, sin. Everything that we have ever done is revealed to Him. The first rule that Jesus and His disciples encounter as this man encounters them is the rule or the law of consequences. As he went along, he saw a man born blind, blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work while I am in the world. I am the light of the world. The question that Jesus' disciples pose to Jesus, whose fault is this? Who is suffering the consequences or who, for whose consequences is this man suffering his blindness? Was it his parents who sinned or was it him? We understand the law of consequences we know that typically, intuitively, our consciences tell us that you get what you deserve in this life. But Jesus is saying, this, this man, who the disciples essentially see as a problem, who sinned? Jesus sees the person. And he says, this man, it is not about his sin or his parents' sin. But this is God's opportunity. And this is the way that God is going to let his light shine. The second rule that gets broken here are the laws of nature. This man was born blind. People who are born blind don't just receive their sight. And so as he says this, these words to his disciples, then Jesus spits on the ground, makes some mud from saliva, and puts it on the man's eyes. And he says, go. 
wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man goes and he washes and he comes home seeing. Now, I would defy any one of us to be able to do that for someone who's born blind. However, Jesus, his words have power. Go, wash, see. Well, we know that by nature, our natural laws tell us that someone who's born blind is without some sort of medical breakthrough going to need to continue to learn how to function while they are in this state of unseeing. But Jesus breaks those laws of nature. He is, after all, the one who, through whom the world was created. As God said, let there be light. There was light. Jesus, the Word who was made flesh, is the one who in his very self carries the power to heal, to redeem, to raise up, to give sight. And so this man who was born blind with the laws of nature, even that his parents later on are saying, we understand, we know that he was born blind, how he sees, we can't explain it, ask him. Nobody could understand it because they were looking to work within the rules of nature. And Jesus doesn't just bend those rules, he breaks them for God's purposes so that this man might have sight, but also so that God's glory might be revealed. The third law that Jesus breaks, the law of tradition. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they represent the the law or the standards of tradition. Now, This day that Jesus healed was the Sabbath day. You were supposed to rest on the Sabbath. You were not supposed to do anything unless you followed strict rules according to the laws that were established to uphold the traditions of the elders. Jesus, by healing, by this very act of making mud, making something, placing it on the man's eyes and healing him, restoring his sight, is seen by the Pharisees as one who has broken the law. And in their minds, they're thinking that he has broken God's law. When in fact, Jesus has come And he has set this captive free so that he might see again. Do you and I have challenges when we're looking at the traditions and the laws that surround our traditions, either within our families or within our church family or even in our world as our world is kind of topsy-turvy standing on its ear? Sometimes traditions are just that, nothing more. At other times, they are important remembrances of who we are, where we have come from. But the way the traditions are being held to by the Pharisees, as they question this man and they say, we know the person who healed you is a sinner, the man answers with tremendous wisdom. That is interesting, he says. Don't you know where he came from? You don't know? And yet he opened my eyes. Can you not see could have been the next phrase that came out of his mouth. We know that God spoke to Moses, yes. But we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. And nobody's ever heard of the eyes of a blind man being opened. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. God's glory is revealed here as Jesus is shown to be the Son of God, the one who has the power to redeem and to heal. And he is the one who has the power 
to illustrate and highlight where traditions may be broken and honoring God might be held to. The next rule that Jesus breaks is the rule of acceptance. As the Pharisees have already made a policy that whoever follows this Jesus is going to be cast out of the synagogue. That's not a place. It's not like a structure. Synagogue simply means to gather together. They have no place if they follow Jesus in our assembly. That was what they were teaching. That was their policy that they had enacted. That is what kept this man who had been born blind his parents in fear. They did not want to cross the Pharisees or else they would be put out. And yet they were willing to sacrifice their son, in a sense, and let him speak for himself. Isolation. Isolation is a way of exercising power and control. And so the law or the rules of acceptance As this man is put out, Jesus then breaks. What's the first thing that happens after this man's put out? When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he had found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Notice what Jesus does. He searches for that man who has now been isolated, but he is not alone. Jesus will not allow him to be alone. There are times when any of us can feel isolated, but God never leaves us alone. It made me think back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve had sinned, what is the next thing we hear about God doing? He's searching for them. He's not looking for them because he doesn't know where to find them, as if God doesn't know a thing. He's not searching for them, unknowing of what has happened. He is full aware that Adam and Eve have broken what commandment he had given them. Do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you will die. He's coming looking for them, Because he is on a search and rescue mission. Our God is the one who always searches so that he can bring us home. So that we would not think for a moment that we had ever been left alone. Even in the valley of the shadow of death. For thou art with me. And so Jesus looks for this man. And then he reminds this man that he himself, Jesus, is the one who even breaks the law of sin and death. Tell me, sir, who is this son of man so that I may believe him? And Jesus says, you've now seen him. Remember, he hadn't seen Jesus yet. You've seen him. In fact, he's the one speaking to you. Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Worshiping Jesus, being found by him, is in essence having our sins cleansed from us, being made acceptable to God, having our lives transformed by his power so that by God's decree, his eternal decree, we are his. Jesus even breaks the laws of nature when he would go to the cross, bear the sins of all which were not his sins to bear, die as a son of God, gives up his life. No one takes it from him. And on the third day, he would defy death, breaking the rules, exiting from the tomb, giving us life eternal. In Jesus' name, amen.